If you go to jail and you say five to ten years, all right, you know five years, and maybe you get off in six for good behavior. But when you are drafted into the army, there is no date that you are promised where they let you out. You are in for the duration. Well, I was drafted into the army with 17 million dollars. Well, I didn't ask the permission of anyone. I only consult consulted myself. I looked around. I knew what the world knew. It was something that had to be done. But I must be honest with myself. I didn't want any part of it. But no part of it. Others would tell me, is that the act of a coward? I didn't care what they said. Is that being a good citizen? I didn't care what they said. As I just said earlier, what we now know, which is called reason, it's a reasonable thing to do. We are at war, and we're all Americans, and we should go in there because our country has declared war. Go in there and fight. And so reason tells us that should be done. I was drafted. I did not oppose it. They drafted me. Took me down to Camp Oak, Louisiana, for my base training. And while I was there, I didn't want any part of it. And I dared to assume that I am out of it. I made my normal natural application, as you have to do in the world of Caesar. Within 24 hours, it came back, and it was simply rejected. It was signed, disapproved, and signed by my colonel, a very nice gentleman. His name was Colonel Theodore Bilbo, Jr. His father was Senator of Mississippi. I said nothing. My captain said, for your sake, Goddard, I am very, very sorry. I know exactly how you feel. You want to be with your wife and your little girl. Your son is in Guadalcanal with the Marines. And you are now almost 38. And so, I know, but I would like to go through this war with a man just like you at my side. So I can't say that I am sorry for myself. I'm sorry only for you. I didn't say one word to him, to the colonel. I didn't oppose it. That was the decision of Caesar. Now, I looked into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and I persevered in that law. And I slept that night as though I slept in my own home in New York City on Washington Square, where I lived on the seventh floor. I lived on that floor, and it was a very large apartment, two bedrooms, a lovely big living room, a dining room, a huge kitchen, and the foyer. And I slept in that place just as though I were there, not in the army. I fell asleep in that state, having done all the normal things that would make me feel this arrangement is perfect. I rearranged the structure of my mind. Instead of seeing 25 men around me sleeping upstairs and knowing that 25 are down below in the next area, I slept in my own bed with my wife in her bed and my little girl in her crib in the corner. I felt everything in that place just as though it's taking place. And I rearranged the structure of my mind and fell sound asleep in that safe. At four o'clock in the morning, here comes a sheet of paper before my eyes and a hand from here down with a pen in its hand. And the pen scratched out the word disapproved. And it wrote in, in a bold script, approved. And then I heard the word, that which I have done, I have done, do nothing. And then I woke. It was too early to disturb the 25 other fellows sleeping there. But I waited until the very first moment that I could leave that room. 
went down to the latrine and shaved and bathed early and came up filled with the glow that the whole thing was done. All right, I walked in that assumption for the next nine days. Nine days later, the same colonel that disapproved my request called me in. He said, close the door, Goddard. So I closed the door. He said, take a seat. Well, he never asked me to take a seat in his presence before. I was a private. You always stood in his presence. He said, take a seat. And then he gave me all the reasons in the world why I should still be in the army. He said, you still want to get out? I said, yes, sir. Give me another reason. You still want to get out? I said, yes, sir. Another one. When he exhausted all the reasons why I should be in the army, and I'm still saying, yes, sir. He said, all right. Bring me another application. Have your captain sign it, which I did. That day, I was honorably discharged and out of the army. I didn't run away. I was honorably discharged. When vision breaks forth into speech, the presence of deity is there. And who can oppose God? So that which I have done, I have done. Do nothing. So he thought he initiated the urge to let me go free. I looked into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and I persevered in that law. And he played his part, for I rearranged the structure of my mind. I was convinced I wanted out. And I didn't ask anyone's permission. I did not discuss it with one as to why I should want out when 17 million men are being drafted plus numberless girls to make a tremendous effort against this monstrous thing that was in Europe. I still wanted out. I did not take anyone into my confidence as to why I wanted out. I had my 13 weeks basic training. And then when I came out, they gave me my citizenship papers and became, I could have been, back in 1922, I could have been an American, but I just didn't have the time or the urge to get around to it, to become a citizen. So I drifted on and drifted on and drifted on, and finally, after this little episode, that's why I went into the army. For I would still be drifting through and being a citizen of Britain. But now I am an American by adoption. And they gave it to me because I did fulfill a 13-week training course in the American Army.